Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Let's Talk Photography, okay? We got a lot in store today, as we do in each ever episode, and uh, right now, I have complete technical issues. That's what I've been dealing with. That's why I'm like two minutes late, so I really apologize. But this week, we're going to be discussing what does the future of photography look like? Let's get into it. All right. Um, I want to say thank you to everybody tuning in. We have a few cool uh, things to talk about. The main thing is, is going to be the um, future of photography. And as many of you know, I have been saying how important it is for you to stay nimble in terms of uh, adapting to the technological changes, uh, what the market demands, and um, and creatively what you can do with this new technology, right? All that's going to affect us for good or for worse. And I figured this would be a great conversation for all of us and kind of a bit of a reality check. So that's what we'll be talking about the future of photography. That's right. So um, with that said, if you have any questions, comments, make sure you post them down below. Now, and if you feel like you want to join, feel free to do so. You know, that's what today is all about. Now, I'm working off of my laptop, believe it or not. Um, same camera, working with the S5, but the uh, my iMac, for some reason, is not working with the software that tells that recognizes the Lumix camera. So I'm having all these particular issues, it's a real pain in my butt, and that's why I was two minutes late. And now I'm dealing with, uh, let me turn this on, do not disturb. And uh, so I'm working off my laptop, so definitely uh, be patient with me, please. So it looks like we already have a comment. And of course, whoa, let me do this here. We have, we have Cooley in the house. Thank you very much, Cooley, for checking in. Uh, yes. So um, I want to say, he says right here, first one here, even after a car crash, that's what I'm talking about. Not the car crash, but still making it. No excuses. So that's awesome. Thank you, Cooley, for checking in. I hope you are safe. Okay. So um, yeah, definitely hope you're safe. So appreciate you tuning in regardless. And uh, that's amazing. Thank you very much. I appreciate the support, but make sure that you're safe and the car is, well, hopefully it's good to go still. So um, I'll keep you keep you in my prayers this evening, okay? All right. Um, let's get to, if I'm looking to my right, it's because I'm looking at my laptop. Normally, I'm looking here at my Mac. And uh, right now, I got to look all the way to my right for my laptop. And I have a, um, I have... A, a MacBook Air. This 13-inch MacBook Air is running everything right now. So I got my Rodecaster Pro over to the left with all my good sound effects. And then um, all my mics or whatever. And then I have my Lumix S5 right here. And then to my right, man, this is a real situation. I feel like uh, like I'm Star Trek. It was a Captain Kirk out here trying to keep the show going. Uh, there was like one second where I was like, you know what? I think I may have to postpone this show by a day because I'm having, so I mean, I've been trying to get this whole thing mobile on my laptop. So when I travel, I could still go live with my Lumix camera as my webcam. And that took a while to get going. Boom. It's working solid as you can tell. But um, then my damn iMac started going down. I was saying, oh, what the heck is going on? I reset it and re-downloaded it, like, re-downloaded and reset it. So I, um, I'm going to have to figure that out. But here we are. Let's get into all the messy stuff, shall we? Meaning the commercial stuff, all right? Of course, if you haven't already and you haven't followed me, shame on you. Okay. Now, go ahead and follow me on Facebook. I'm at Robert Silver Photography. That's where my fan page is. I'm on Instagram, always posting there, at Robert Silver Photography. I'm on Tickety Tock, 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 and I don't stop. And no, I won't do a dance, but I am there at Robert Silver Photography. I'm on 
Twitter. Yes, I'm tweeting right along with Elon Musk and Kanye West and other people uh, at Rob Silver Photog. So, yes, I'm on there. I'm on uh, Twitter, too. And uh, one of the best ways to support this channel besides pressing that like, share, and all that good stuff is going to be support. Uh, come follow me on uh, Patreon. Go uh, subscribe to my Patreon channel for exclusive live streams and, the, and educational content at uh, patreon.com slash Robert Silver Photography, okay? The entry level is five bucks, but at $10, you get immediate access to live streams, okay? Exclusive live streams. This, These are live streams that will be to the viewers, I mean, to the subscribers at my Patreon at the $10 level, all right? Now, with that said, I have a couple of Patreons already, and I really appreciate their support. And that's why I will be hosting this lifestyle fashion photo shoot at my studio with my new live stream setup that you see right here. Uh, but it will be exclusive only to my Patreons. So if you want to come to an end, that's going to be Sunday, uh, February 26th at 10 a.m., it will be live exclusive to my Patreon members at the $10 level. So go ahead, click that link in my description section, become a supporter, please. That would be fantastic. And it'll only empowers me to be able to continue to give you more educational content. Okay. So, um, let me just check for things, make sure everything's looking smooth over here. Cool. I'm just double checking, folks. I apologize. I just want to make sure all is looking good with this laptop. And uh, let me know if the audio sounds horrible or not, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Oh, it looks like we got a couple of comments. Uh, an another uh, comment coming in. Cooley says, there are nuts everywhere. Absolutely. You got to drive safe, man. You got to drive safe. Keep it safe, folks. Hey, everybody on Instagram, if you're tuning in. Okay, to see the full live show, make sure you click the link in my bio and come on, join us. Join us on YouTube. All right. All right. Um, now, I do have my next live show is this Monday. For those who may have to cut early, it's for, you know, on Mondays is what? Mondays is what, folks? It is marketing monday all right so marketing monday this week we will be talking about photography upselling that's right it's an art form but you could be leaving a lot of money on the table if you don't understand the fundamentals of good old-fashioned upselling that's right we want to maximize each of the clients that we get to work with okay and in doing so you leave more uh you leave more money in your pocket okay and there's all sorts of subtle ways for you to be able to upsell, adding more service and value to your customers, and they will more than likely pay you for it, okay? So we're going to talk about some uh, upselling tech. First of all, what is upselling? And then some simple ways for you to incorporate that into your product line and your sales um, um, um into your sales when it comes to when you're engaging with your client at the front end and at the back end of the sale uh, experience period. Okay. So we're going to be talking about photography upselling. So make sure you tune in this Monday for marketing Monday. And yes, you'll see the live stream pop up tomorrow. You just make sure you smash that bell icon so that you get notifications of when it's about to go live. Okay. Uh, Hey everybody on Instagram. Again, if you want to come be a part of the conversation, all you got to do is join me on YouTube right now. Click the link in my bio smash that YouTube and you could join the conversation with me as we talk about the future of photography and what that means. We'll be going over seven things. Okay. Not this, but seven things of what the future of photography will hold for us. Cause us photographers, we need to be on it. Okay. Do not sleep. All right. Um, now let's get right into it, folks. Oh, of course, if you're looking to, Step up your photography game. I do host in-person photography workshops. All you got to do is head to my website at robertsilverphotography.com for more details. Or if you're on Instagram right now, click that link in my bio and click 
photo workshops. You know what time it is, okay? So go ahead and do that. Press these likes. Now, uh, for those that don't know what Let's Talk Photography is, every Thursday it's a show that I host, and sometimes I invite guests. I welcome guests, actually, on my show on Thursdays. But we talk about everything about photography. That's camera lighting and the industry itself and how it's moving and how it's affecting us overall because there's always the updates happening. And that's why every Thursday we just sit around and talk photography. And um, we start off with a topic, but sometimes we just go different directions, and that's okay too, right? Uh, now, as I said, today we're going to be talking about the future of photography. What does it look like? Okay, we all know uh, there's a lot of, there has been, especially over the past, I'm going to say two years, technological changes that have really grew, dramatically infected our photography for good and for worse. You know, autofocus is incredibly good. Our cameras uh, capture images at an extremely high rate. That's really fantastic. Now, like if your camera does under 10 frames a second, we're sitting here like, what, 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 what are you taking pictures with? And then um, like we expected to do 30 frames a second now for photos. It's crazy. But there are some cons too. We have artificial intelligence getting smarter and better, more efficient, and producing really great images just with you typing in a caption or two. And um, so that's why it's really important for us to understand what these changes are so that we can benefit from it and hopefully capitalize on these new changes that are coming up because those who get fall, fall by the wayside are those who keep their heads in the sand right we don't want that absolutely not so that's why i figure why not we talk about it uh because these are conversations i have with my friend photographers all the time and uh we go on uh, uh we, we, you know we'll talk for an hour or so about certain things so I already know if we're talking about it, some of you must be having this on your mind as well. Okay. So, uh, oh, hold on. Cooley comes in and says, have been doing some green screen more often. Oh, that's cool too. Yeah, absolutely. I think right now for folks to get more into a specialty niche is going to be one of the safest things for you, especially if it if incorporates some of these changes that are, that are going to be affecting us in the future more and more. So absolutely, uh, getting into video, as I always said, is imperative. Um, it's a great way for you to um, add more value to your client because some of them want photos and some of them want video, some of them want both. So you don't want to miss out on that. Um, but also uh, they char they pay more for video because they, they see the, the value in video production. It's hard to, it's hard for, to replicate. Um, it, nowadays, when they see a snapshot, it's hard for them to see the value of your snapshot versus one they took off their iPhone. And it's hard to distinguish the value. But with video, it still holds its weight. It can't be easily replicated. And a lot of times it involves an entire team. So when they hire you, you pay for an editor, you might pay for uh, a director, you might pay for all this other stuff to get the job done or a cinematographer and you're the uh, director or you're both. So, it's, so so the value is still there. And being that uh, most people consume content with motion, motion video, then um, the, again, the value, it, it just, it just uh, reinforces the value of video. So I'm not saying you need to turn, be a Steven Spielberg, but you should become proficient enough or comfortable enough to produce some sort of video production uh, services for, to your clients. And if not, work very closely with someone who does and teamwork together. But it, that's definitely good. Should it should already have been uh, part of your game plan as a photographer. Um, now, before we get into, I believe I have um, seven things we're going to go over that are influencing the future of photography. Oh, we got another comment. It comes. Uh, Cooley says comes in handy when shooting on location with uh, with background at, at a reception. Oh yeah, absolutely. Especially if you want to change that change that background. If you have the software that changes the background for you, oh, absolutely, that'd be great for a wedding. <clears throat> I'm sure they'll get a kick out of it. Plus, that's one thing you're gonna upsell. Actually, that's what I would do, and that's what we'll be talking about on Monday. You know, you you offer your wedding photography service, right? And then um, 
And then you say, hey, you know what? I could add this photography um, backdrop package to it for an X amount extra dollars. And you'd be amazed how many people would grab on that. Absolutely. So make sure you're upselling that extra service. Don't give away everything plus the kitchen sink. That would be an absolute waste. Okay? That would be no. Um, Cooley says, cannot shoot over shoulder. Yes. Uh, I, if that means people who are attending the uh, wedding, absolutely. I, I'm guessing they wouldn't be able to shoot over the shoulder. Absolutely. It'd make it that much harder, you know, with their cell phones and iPads and whatnot, which is always annoying for me at weddings. Anyway. All right, let's get into it. As I said earlier, go ahead and support the channel in the most easiest financially accessible way, which is press that like, that share, and subscribe to my channel. And with that said, let's get, oh, let's get into the first topic of this evening, okay, before I run out of my voice, okay? Um, oh, let me pull up the screen. Here we go. Boom, bada, bam, bam. Okay. Boom. Okay. First things first. We're going to be discussing, okay, future of photography, immersive photography. Now, now, what you mean, what, what we're going to be talking about, again, remember, a lot of this is about the technological impact on photography in our business, right? So that's what we're, that's what we're really referring to when we mean by immersive photography. Matter of fact, this could be a niche that you specialize in that I guarantee you not a lot of photographers are crowded in that, in that space, right? Now, what do I mean by that? Let's go ahead. And uh, talk about it right here. All right. Now, I found this website. I thought it was great. It's called uh, expertphotography.com. Tons of great articles about uh, gear, but also some great market uh, predictions like this one. Our seven predictions for the photography, uh, future of photography, right? Now, as I come down here, the first one is it's number seven. It goes from seven to one. Future photography, immersive photography, right? So photography is an art, right? Developed over 200 years, blah, 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 blah. Now, as we know, photography up to this point has been limited to two dimensions. It's a, two, it's a flat image, right? It's a two-dimensional image. Even though we're taking pictures of, of real life in 3D, but the image itself, the photos that are created, whether it be digital or print, are all 2D, right? So that's the way it's been for 200 years. But no, as you know, 3D tech photography has been around for a long time, especially nowadays with 360 cameras, all right? Now, I don't use a 360 camera. I've seen people who know, who know how to use it, and it looks awesome. But I've seen more and more, not only cameras, but really, it's video, right? So do not forget that that can be an entire niche right now for you as a photographer. And actually, that would actually be a smart move for you to really get into that sphere and sell it, I would say, real estate for sure, sports, events, absolutely. Um, what other ones could be actually pretty immersive or just brands that want that kind of specialty kind of footage? Hey, everybody over on Instagram, feel free to join the conversation by clicking on the link in my bio and smashing that YouTube link because that's where we're at right now. So you can see the article that I'm talking about. Anyway, so it says here, uh, 3D has always been a niche indulgence, right? They used to be a gimmick, but now it's really changing. Cameras and computers are on the verge of creating future uh, fully immersive 3D images. We have, when I went to LA, they have, um, um, what do you call it? Uh, re a re um, reality, you know, games. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, freaking virtual reality games, excuse me, brain fart. Um, virtual reality games. So these are these are ways for you to, uh, to try to get into that video space. In other words, the popularity is popularity is growing in all sorts of ways. So for you, the more creative you're you're at at 
adapt, uh, not adapting, but applying these 3D technologies, it can really help to separate you now as you get in on a low level before it becomes oversaturated in that space. What I mean by oversaturated, one is like portrait photography. I mean, let's be honest. Almost anybody with a camera and a lens is a portrait photographer all of a sudden, right? And despite the skill level, the entry, the bar is very low. Therefore, it's very saturated. Everybody can give you a headshot. Therefore, the value, the perceived value of said headshot is much lower than someone who specializes in 3D um, video content, right? Let's just be honest. So that's why I'm saying this could be a very smart move for you to concentrate on so that you don't miss the curve when this technology gets more and more and more popular to the point where it's almost expecting, hey, can you do this? Why not? You know, so that this could be something this can really think about it, folks. Um, here we go. 3D tech, uh, th uh, 360 camera technology is moving us towards a fully immersive experience. Absolutely. Go look up uh, some video that people have done with 360 cameras. Uh, uh, who, I remember back in the day, Nikon dabbled with a 360 camera, but definitely GoPro has it. A bunch of third party Chinese ripoff companies have it. And um, who else has three 360 cameras? But I know for sure GoPro. But the point is, it looks awesome. And for you to create it and manipulate it is getting much easier for you to process that video footage and edit it the way you want it. So it's like, you know, the future is here. Um, but I remember when Nikon had a 360 camera and no, or at least like it was, uh, was it 360? I can't remember. I think it was a 360. And no one ever touched it. And that was like six years ago. But now it's so... Um, the technology has gotten much better improved, easier to use. And now I see a lot more people using them with their, Go with their GoPro sticks and whatnot and they're recording 360 all the time. Um, Google Maps is a great example. Thanks to 360 camera work, we can roam the streets of cities. Absolutely. You see their cars driving around and taking map footage and everything. That just makes it easier for us to navigate through Google Maps. Uh, we could carry a 360 degree technology round in our pocket. Absolutely. Just like I said, with the with the um, um, GoPro 360, it's it's super small. It's, I'm quite sure it's smaller than your um, your cell phone. Uh, with 3D 360 camera te technology, we are entering the world of virtual reality. Absolutely. Just like I said, when I went to L.A., one of the best things I experienced was this whole virtual, this VR zombie shooting game, it was so much fun. And boy, it, it the responsiveness of it, uh, it was just a great, it was a great experience, but I was really blown away with the technology. And and um, and I was thinking like how um, the applications that could be used with this technology. So it was pretty cool. Uh, in the future, we all have photos that we can walk around and touch. Imagine that. So you capture the image and you deliver the experience, right? Not just looking at, but they can go and look in that where you took it with that person and they can relive that experience like immersively. That would be amazing. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's something that can happen sooner than later. So you capture that moment right there. And then when you maybe put on VR glasses, right, goggles, and when you put it on, you're still there. Damn, that, that'd be crazy, right? That's crazy. But yet, is it really? So, you know, I think that would be, a, now, if that's, an ex man, if I could wrap that up and sell it, holy Christ, and being one of the first people to do it, it's a wrap. You lock down a corner, you lock down that market ASAP, and you'll be the next uh, Lindsay Adler or Sue Bryce or Peter Hurley in that sphere. So you're able to charge top dollar for that particular service because no one else is really doing it. And the entry into that space is much higher. Um, at the moment, uh, at the moment, real time, real 3D imagery is costly and difficult to produce. Exactly. But what did we just say about 360 cameras? That was at one time costly and difficult to use. 
six years later, it's super easy. And hell, people are editing on their phone. So they record the video, they process it through the GoPro app, and then they take that footage and cut it up some more through another software like or a little app like, like CapCut. And then boom, bada bang, all within their phone, they're able to uh, shoot, edit, and then upload straight to their platform, right? Uh, whether it be Instagram or YouTube or whatnot. So I'm telling you, in the next 10 years, we got to get hit to being uh, thinking outside of the box. Uh, and, and, and no one's telling you, let mark my words right now. That's why I keep impressing that you have to add, you have to think of ways creatively to add more value. Otherwise, you will be left behind. This will just be an expensive hobby for you. And if that's what this is, Hey, Mazel Tov, do your thing, man. I'm not mad at you. You know, enjoy photography. But if you're a photographer and you're like, you know, hey, I would like to kind of get paid a couple bucks, a little, little side hustle or something like that. Dude, I'm telling you, this is it right now. OK, I'm, I'm giving you game. All right. That's why we're talking about photography now. Um, Real quick, let me just. Get to. Comments I see here. Cooley says, have some tea. Yo, oh, the, <laughs> hey, shout out to Cooley, though. Uh, you're right. Uh, t I, you know what? I didn't get to do tea this evening. I just have good old-fashioned water, and I think I'm going to regret that mistake right there. Last time I had tea, though, I'm not going to lie, it was a little hard to fall asleep, but boy, that tea really hit the spot. So, But thank you for the reminder. Um... Let's get to the next one, okay? Boom, bada, bing. So the next thing we're going to talk about is constant connectivity, okay? Constant connectivity. And this I've been seeing more and more. Uh, being that I work um, for Lumix, uh, Panasonic Lumix, here's my jacket here. I had, to, I had to go visit a camera store today. Here it is, Panasonic Lumix. Shout out to Panasonic. Uh, even in their new cameras, this is, well, I would have to say definitely in the last, uh, for sure, since they came out their full frame S line, the feature was really important, which is Bluetooth connectivity. Of course, their Wi-Fi connectivity, but most importantly, wireless connectivity, right? Which they start introducing in the GH uh gh5 mark ii and onward uh gh6 um of course now the s5 mark ii and the s5 mark ii x and uh matter of fact one camera like right now i just got in the s5 mark ii right for me to hang out and and and, and, and display and show and i'm going to do a review on this camera and one of the impressive things is is they're talking about wireless connection so uh, but more cameras, especially Sony and Nikon have the two. They're, everybody's hip on this. Your camera is no longer just a still photo camera. Like You have to get out of that mindset. You don't just buy a camera for a still photo. Any of these cameras from any of these brands right now made within the past, I'm going to say five years, but for sure past three years are just fine. Okay? I'm sorry. They're just fine. They're going to take beautiful, stunning photos. You're going to have zero problem. It's what's inside of it that's really changing really fast, okay? Uh, image stabilization, the S5 now is up to 6.5 stops of image stabilization. Um, the frame rates, obviously, the autofocus, it's all the internal stuff that, that really, uh, it's not really just megapixels that's a big deal, okay? Because most people won't see it won't appreciate it and wouldn't know if you asked them if they looked at a photo. Oh, that's taken with a hundred megapixels. Nobody knows, nobody cares. Really, megapixel is for you, you know, the importance for your application. What do you tend to do for? Oh, I need to do billboard commercial prints, stuff like that. Okay, guaranteed. Oh, I actually shoot editorials for a magazine for layouts, etc. Okay, fine. Got you. But if you're just posting for fun and you're and you're most likely posting on your website or, or or social media, I guarantee you, besides yourself and bragging rights, no one gives a damn about you and your 100 megapixel images. No one cares. OK, so with that said, that's why I said 
Stop worrying about it. All of your photos will be just fine depending on the camera you choose. They'll be just fine. But it's the internals like this, constant connectivity. These are certain cool key things that are going to help you to what? Add more value to your photography. That's why we're going to be talking about it right now. Let's get into it. All right. Uh, okay. So we can see right here. Boom. One of the hottest topics with digital photography right now is connectivity. Over the last few years, we have seen DSLRs and mirrorless cameras with wireless connections. That's right. Shout out to Nikon real quick. I have the uh, Nikon Z9, and I'm not going to lie. It finally works really, really well with their app. Their app used to be absolutely atrocious, I mean, to the nth degree. Lumix's app is amazing. Their first version and their second version, because they have two different types, one for the S lineup and then one for um, all the GH uh, cameras and so forth and, 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 and uh, point shoots. Both apps work seamless, very stupid easy, very easy to connect, always reliable. But the Nikons was atrocious for a long time. But I was just doing some self-portraits in the studio. And um, the app now with the Z9 is working like a champ. So shout out to them, okay, uh, for making that improvement. Like, what in the heck were you doing for so many years and making sure that app was trash? Like, that is the way of the future. Apps are the future. But again, um, who, who? when was the last time we needed to buy uh, a, an actual traditional shutter remote? Like, what? No, you don't need to because you have these apps that work, you know, wirelessly to your, to your, um, to your uh, camera and your phone becomes a shutter. It be you control the camera you can download the photos, man. I love this feature. So the, I think this is, this is fantastic. It only increases my workflow. If I want to actually post a behind the scene photo that is crispy and clean, um, with my camera, I can do so wirelessly within a minute and boom, bada bing, I'm ready to go to post versus taking it with my cell phone. So, Man, I love that. Uh, previously, so you can see here, uh, most cameras now have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and near-field connectivity, which is awesome. And these are all standard built in. Lumix has it, and they have it in spades. They've been doing it for a long time, to tell you the truth. So with the GH5, um, um, uh, G95, uh, G85, freaking even a ZS70, which is their... Um, um, uh, point and shoot camera, you know what I'm saying? Half inch sensor. That thing's got you can connect to an app. So you can knock it off. This is like the, it, it only increases the efficiency of your workflow and the enjoyment of the camera. Previously, you would tether your camera to your computer using a cable. You'd transfer the photos from your camera to your device using software such as Lightroom and Capture One. Some of you may still do that. That's fine. I take out the SD card, I slap it in there. But as I said, you can transfer now wirelessly from your camera to your phone. So if your client really loves a photo, wants to hurry up and post a B BTS, you can professionally take it so that they can. Pr you can proudly have them tag you in it. You can professionally take it, download it right to your mobile app, and give it to them. Boom. That is what? Adding more value to your, for your client. Okay? That's a solid way. Okay? Uh to share images, you have to send them from your computer. You know, that's what I said. Now you can just download it. But cables are becoming a, a thing of the past. That's right. Right now, folks, think about it. Right now, I'm only te I'm tethering with a 13-inch MacBook Air, okay? Only 18 gi um, uh, gigs of RAM, which was naughty on me. But anyway, the deal was great. Um, with one cable, the USB cable that came with the S5, I plug it right into the USB C and then I and then I connect it to a dongle to the to the laptop here and then boom bada bing. I'm off to the races. I'm streaming live. I mean, come on, like this is the way to do it. So when people have really crappy webcams, I'm sitting there like, okay, you know what? Guaranteed, the Lumix might be an inexpensive uh, version of a webcam, but there are lesser version, uh, expensive versions that will work just fine. Okay, but the point is. It makes my ability much easier. Before, I used to have like uh, capture cards, uh, HDMI cables. I used to have all this crap. Now it's just one USB. So that's pretty amazing. Um, you can share your work with clients as soon as you shoot it. As I said, as soon as it's done. Uh, currently, there are some limitations where you can only transfer JPEG 
not raw files. Now you can. Some cameras couldn't do raw now. At one time, it was JPEG because obviously the files are much easier to transfer. But now you can do raw. Okay. Um, hell, uh, with Nikon, you can say, do you want two megabyte or the original file size? Come on, folks. These are all great pro, uh, uh, little small changes that are only going to be, if their R&D is going into that, figure out ways for you to leverage this new technology. It's just not a, 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 a machine that just takes photos. It does way more. Um, but with every new generation and with each new uh, technology added, think about ways for you to be able to manipulate that te new technology for you to add value to your clients, to your photo shoots, to your whatever, or just to your art. Um, in the future, we'll see wireless charging as we already are. Right now, my phone is charging, uh, my phone, my camera is charging via USB-C to my laptop. And uh, matter of fact, I gotta watch out for this battery because I'm already, I'm at 50%. I've been using a laptop all day. But the um, but with that said, boom bada bang, I'm charging the camera right now as I'm streaming live. All right. Um possibly it says possibly we'll see cameras recharge themselves in the future. Well, damn it, that's scary. That'll be crazy. Or ones that uh their own power source, battery life is still a top priority. As absolutely, like right now, I'm looking at the battery life of the battery on this on the camera, as well as in my laptop. And my laptop, boy, oh boy, it's doing a lot right now. So let's get right into the next one. Okay. I would like to not my, my, my damn battery die on us here. All right. Um looks like we got a comment. Let's go ahead and check that out. Daniel Jeffries tunes in. Yeah, thank you. He comes in. Sorry, got here a little late. What's up, Rob? Thank you very much, Daniel. Right now, we are talking about what the future of photography looks like for us, okay? And that's why I mentioned what I mentioned. Uh, hey, Fred, if you're still there, feel free to click on the link in my bio and, and check us out on uh, YouTube, and you can see the article that we're talking about, okay? Um, oh, here we go. And we also have another, oh my goodness, another Patreon member. Thank you very much. And we have pie in the house. Yeah. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I love excitement. Okay. And I love to see the same faces. Okay. I really appreciate all of your support. Um, it's really appreciated. It truly is. It actually pumps me up because sometimes these days are hard, you know, get a little down. But not, nah, but pie and everybody else, thank you very much. Um, let's get into the next thing, shall we? The rise of vintage, which this one I had to read a couple of times. I was like, what do you mean the rise of vintage? But it is true, though. I'm, I can't deny it. So let's get right into it, shall we? Okay. Boom, I'll do it like this so you guys can see a little bit easier. Cool. So with every new generation of digital cameras, we see higher resolutions and better specs. As I said earlier, they're only going to get more and more and more uh, JPEGs, like um, yeah, higher resolution. Digital cameras are more versatile and convenient than ever. That's right. It's more versatile, right? They are video, they're, hybrid is the norm. It used to be like a selling point. No, it's the norm, Okay. Okay, it's not as popular as it once was, but it's far from dead. The development of digital technology, film was going to die. And as we all know, especially if you're a millennial or younger, they go hard in the paint with the film, photo film photography. Me, hell to the no. But God bless. But I think it's just a waste of money. But that's just my opinion. Feel free to hate down in the comment section. Um... Modern digital cameras are amazing. The possibilities make us feel like we already live in, in tomorrow's world. Absolutely, with the things that can do. But for some photographers, it's not satisfying. Film phot uh, photographs have a texture and a quality, and a digital um, a, a quality digital has not been able to replicate. Uh, digital photography can be easy and convenient, but still prefer the manual approach. That's right. Uh, shout out to Fuji cameras. A lot of people who do Fuji, it's, it's because they're able to get the benefits of digital, but also have the aesthetic and the experience 
of taking like film photography, but not being film, um, especially with the color representation, the color of F Fuji uh, cameras are really stellar, especially with the black and white. And it's and I, I'll be damned if you know with some of the color grading and the grain and everything else. It's, I mean, Fuji cameras are, are top notch when it comes to some great looking street photography cameras, and the aesthetic of them too are super cool. And they have all the dials. It's very you know the experience of Fuji definitely. I can see why people enjoy the experience of sh capturing images with Fuji. So they get it. They get that aspect, this rise of vintage, right? And it's not just 35 millimeter medium format photography make a com or making a comeback, even the antique process of wet plate photography, right? That could be something too. Again, if the majority of people are digital, which I'm going to safely say it is, but you specialize in medium format portrait photography, and it produces this particular aesthetic that cannot easily be replicated by digitally, I, hell, I'd say go for it and let that be your shtick. Let that be what separates you, what makes you special. That X factor that we talked about on Marketing Monday, right? What makes you special? This could be it, that you specialize in this kind of uh, wet plate portrait studio photography. I think bringing that classic back could be a great way for you to position yourself in the marketplace. Okay, solid win. Okay, and you know what that means wins equals coins in your pocket. All right, so, um, other major brands strictly digital these days, but in the future, I can see many trying to capitalize on the vintage trend in photography, right? Uh, or perhaps they, they'll release a new SLR. I don't, you know, I don't know about all, you know, I don't know, you know what I'm saying, but uh. You know, Mazel Tov to that idea. <laughs> well, you know, but I have my own. I have my own comments about film, and uh, I think it's cool. But I, I just don't see with the ever decreasing photography uh, camera space. Right, every camera brand right now is vying for market shares. Uh, that's decreasing. Um, I just don't see them uh, investing a lot of R and D uh, back into film when clearly the future. And the return is in digital, right? Uh, for you to up, first of all, to fix the cameras, it's much easier to find parts and everything else for all the new stuff, right? All the new mirrorless digital cameras. Um, also, if for you to update that camera no, uh, requires what? A software update, you know what I mean? A couple of dudes uh, or and gals uh, programming a few such as such and then releasing it for free and boom, now you are improved the experience with the current camera you have. That is just not going to happen um, with film photography and, uh, and cameras in that sense. Uh, you'd just have to get the new another camera or, in, or fix the one you got. Um, so I just don't see the ROI being in film photography in, in a sense to being worth to uh, put a tons of R&D and coming out with a whole bunch of new crap. No, I just don't see it. Um, but feel free to hate. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. Hey, I want to hear your opinion. That's why this is called Let's Talk Photography. This is a conversation. And uh, if you think I got, if I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, I want you to go ahead and share it. That's that. It's all good. I don't, you know, I got thick skin. I'm not tripping. Um Looks like we got another comment. Of course. I appreciate that. Um, Cooley says, need to come out and have you help me pick new video stuff. Well, first thing, Cooley, uh, if you want if you want to do it, you could easily, let me see if I have it here. Oh, you could contact me. Send me a quick email, right? If you have any uh, questions, if you want to set up a consultation, I can do a virtual consultation. You don't need to come out here, uh, but you, we can at least do a virtual consultation to get you going. So feel free to hit me up at robertsilverphotography.com, brother. You know what I'm saying? So it's all good. Um, let me take that off so you can see that a little bit easier. Cool. And... Um, Let's see, I got another comment. I'm sorry, folks. And Cooley says, first DSLR was a Fuji X3 Pro. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. yeah I almost got a Fuji at one time. It's going to be the X-T2 at the time. 
I just love the way it looks. It still looks very cool, you know what I mean? But um, at that time, I don't think I had image stabilization, which I thought was freaking a horrible move. Like any mirrorless camera should have stabilization, in my opinion. But otherwise, just stay DSLR, you know? Um, and Pi comes in and says, I'm with the vintage look from DSLR. Some images from current mirrorless cameras are too damn perfect. Okay, well, you know, shout out to you, brother. Um, I, I, I can see what you mean, you know, um, like when I do film, but when I pull out an anamorphic lens, it has a certain imperfection, not so perfectly sharp that it looks more film, um, more cinematic, if you will. And I love it. So I 100% agree. Absolutely. Um, I, I'm just overall, I just don't see it as a wise business decision to invest um, into film photography. That's for sure. Uh, but DSLRs, why not? You know, they're still great cameras. Uh, D500 is fantastic. D810, uh, D850. I'm just talking from a Nikon shooter at the time zero issues with any of those cameras they're all fantastic but the the roi in terms of uh your investment as a um as a photographer is in mirrorless that's a fact that is just a fact you're going to get more bang for your buck and as i said all the firmware updates are going and all the research development and support is going where to the mirrorless so if you have a dslr that's great but just realize you're not going to get that hardcore future support as you would getting a mirrorless camera. That's just, that's just the way it is. Um, Pi comes in. He says, like the article you mentioned on AI with Chelsea Northup, the images from AI are just too perfect and not accurate and authentic. 100%. And that's what I mean. But look what it's doing already. Look what our AI, um, we're going to talk about that in a second, uh, Pi. So just, just, uh, you know, cool your jets, brother. Okay, uh, we're but we're gonna revisit that AI. Okay, but I appreciate that you appreciated the article and the. I believe I shared the video on the Patreon. Hope you checked it out. And yes, the video was really well done, and they made a lot of great points. I couldn't deny it. That's why I had to share it. Uh, Cooley says, in the old day, film camera with uh with Fuji sixteen hundred. Absolutely. Now I could just. Put it on ISO 1600. But yeah, absolutely. I know what you mean. Uh, but, you know, the time is now. You know what I'm saying? That's my, that's my point. Um, I'm just trying to help you to understand where the ROI is. And that's for you to invest in mirrorless technology. Now, if you have a side thing and you just enjoy film shooting, and again, if this photography is just for your pleasure, then do you and enjoy it. All right? Because most of all, all you, uh, most of all, I just want you to keep shooting and stay creative. That's the most important part. Um, Pi says thanks for the feedback, Robert. Absolutely, man. You're, you're you're more than welcome. And honestly, like I said, your support gives me a lot of uh, uh, how can I say a motivation. Thank you very much. Um, Daniel's uh, Daniel comes in. I enjoyed the article on Patreon. Great read. There you go, brother. That's what I'm saying, folks. I'm trying to tell. I'm trying to tell people. I'm. I'm sharing things that I feel. Um, excuse me. I wouldn't even say feel. We're not going to do it, Emil. We're going to deal with facts. What I know will help you out because it helped me out in some particular way. Okay. So, and all you got to do, folks, is go ahead and join me. Join my Patreon at patreoncom slash Photography. The entry level is five bucks, but there is a ten dollar tier which gives you access to my upcoming live photo shoots okay so if you want to watch my live photo shoots they will now be only available to my ten dollar patreons so um and as i said the next live patreon um shoot is coming up and it's going to be right here which is february 26th that's sunday at 10 a.m exclusively for my ten dollar patreon supporters you're going to be able to watch me live. And I've improved the camera quality and the audio quality of my live stream setup at the studio. So I have Venusa here. As you can see her here in this photo, she will be the model for this live shoot. And again, only way you can watch it and be a part of the conversation is joining my $10 uh, Patreon 
uh, 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 membership, okay? So I just wanted to share that with you folks. I know a few of you already are there, but for those who are not, I want you to not miss out, all right? Now, let's get back into it, shall we? Okay, we're, we're all over the place, folks. We're all over the place. Yes, let's bring it back. Um, next thing. Here we are. Reduced damage for, oh, excuse me, reduced demand for professionals. What have I been saying, folks, for weeks and weeks and weeks, okay, that the perceived value of photographers are always going down. Why? Because there's a huge influx of photographers. The entry to photography is very low, very low. And I want you to just be hip to it. You have to come off that much harder. You have to ex be that much more creative with your lighting, with your approach, with your uh, composition, everything. You got to really be on your A game because it's very easy for your work to look like everybody else's. If you don't have that signature look, that vibe, that everything, and it's, and it's communicated through your work, you're going to be left behind. Because, again, with the advent of the cell phone and, and cell phone technology creating great photos, the, the people's perception is, oh, well, I can take a great photo. I just need you to do it because I can't do it right now. And the cameras are only getting better on these cell phones. Let's, let's be honest, okay? I went on a hike, and I brought my good camera and everything else, and, hell, I took all the photos on my phone. OK, because it was just that much easier. It was smaller. It was lighter. And guess what? It was there. It was right in my back pocket, kissing my butt. So that is the reality. Therefore, you got to come harder. You got to be much better. You got to be you, you, you cannot be uh, pulling punches here. Here it is. The continuous there will be continuous uh, reduced demand for professionals, especially with AI and, and other sorts of software technologies. Uh, making, uh, creating photos in the hell. Some of them are really good. Some of them are trashy, but it's only going to get better. And we'll be talking about AI in a second. So let's get right into it, shall we? Um, here we go. There are many ways to make a living as a photographer from weddings and photojournalism. There are many ways you can uh, cam you can generate income, right? With your camera. Of course, we know that. That's what I'm all about. I want you to turn your passion to profits. That's what Marketing Monday is about. Make sure you tune in this Monday. Um, for many photographers, the development of camera technology has been a blessing. They can be more productive and reduce out uh, 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 outgoings. But it's not all positive. Good cameras are easy to find and cheap to buy. Exactly. If you have a credit card, hell, you don't even need a credit card. A lot, you get a, you get a, um, what was that Canon latest uh, R something or other? Some one of Ca uh, Canon's latest mirrorless cameras is like six hundred sixty of uh, fifty bucks, and boom! Now you're in the game with an RF mount. Like, are you kidding me? It's so cheap now. Um, smartphones are even better. Are able to outperform professional photography tasks. That's right. What I mean by that is autofocus. That's one thing it does well in very fast. As a matter of fact. The autofocus of your cell phone is now expected in your camera, meaning the experience, fast, quick, easy, flat uh, touch screen. That's because of touch screen on our cell phone, a lot of companies had to quickly adapt to touch screen on their cameras. Panasonic has always been doing that, but some companies hail to the no. Nikon was one of them. It took a long time for them to finally get you to be able to tap on the back of your screen. Okay. But the user, the consumer demand experience, their expected experience, it was driven by cell phones. So autofocus, yes, I need to be able to do it. Uh, uh, um, and, 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 and touch screen experience. I'm going to even say some of it uh, being um, auto uh, uh, image stabilization. Because if you ever held your video with your cell, uh, uh, with your cell phone, it's actually pretty pretty stabilized. It's pretty good, just handheld. You know, uh, you have to really try to make a, a completely awful picture. Um, people and companies are great take pictures of themselves. Oh yeah, people and companies can't take great pictures of themselves. They no longer need to hire a professional photographer. And as we head into the future, this trend will continue further. Absolutely. Why? First of all, the perceived value 
of professional photographers are going down unless you add more value. That's why I keep telling you, you need to add more value. You can't just say, oh, I just take headshots. Unless you're absolutely phenomenal and you have a particular characteristic and a few niche people are willing to pay for your career, right? And pay that high demand because if you're more niche, um, less people are going to be your target audience and thus you need to increase that price in order for you to live. If you have that, well, the mazel tov, you're off to the races. But for the rest of us, this is a serious issue. You can overcome that by adding more value by with services, and you can add more value by um, um, thinking more creative, more uniquely. That's why I said, "Oh, look how look at look at not only AI, but look at that 360 video market. Where's that going? How much? Uh, what are what companies are starting to develop and get into that? How do I get into that space and create a, a, a market?" In that space, um, I still get calls for corporate headshots, uh, uh, professional headshots, stuff like that. Absolutely, hundred percent. But I realize as like as I, what I'm doing personally is I'm leaning more toward the influencer space, the educating uh, edutainment space here on YouTube more. And, and producing helpful content for you and helping you inspire you and everything. And now I'm realizing I'm using more of my photography to promote this space, right? Not that I'm not still getting clients. I still am, but I'm just thinking forward. I'm like, okay, how do I leverage these technologies? How do these technologies make my job easier where I can produce more helpful content for all of you? If I was just still waiting for a headshot customer, I are you kidding me? I, I can't keep up with inflation. Let's just be honest. Photographers will have to work. It's not even just inflation. It's also all the new every year, every day, every minute, new photographers into the space. And hell, I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area, which is just completely flooded with people with cameras. So you got to you got to be nimble now, folks. I'm trying to help you out. And our cameras are allowing us to do just that. So it's really shame on you if you're not really thinking ahead. That's why I'm talking about the seven predictions of what the future of photography is looking like. Do your homework, folks. All right. Photography will have to work harder to make their work stand out. Absolutely. That's why I said, what's your X factor? That's why we talked about that in the live show, last live show, right? And what did I say? Add value, add value, add value. In a world where everyone can take a picture on their phone, the photographers will not will, will need to provide a point of difference. Absolutely. The first easiest one is just add video. Do video. Because, yeah, your cell phone might be able to capture video, but you could edit it. You're, you have your aesthetic. You have your lighting and everything else. There is still a place for professionals in the future of photography. New niches will open up. That's why I'm saying, look at 360s. Another great, it's a great example, man. I'm telling you. Because the footage I've seen people cut, I'm like, damn, that thing looks clean as hell. Now, you could put that in a vertical format uh, and, and make, uh, let's say, 10 reels for a client and package that up for a deal. You could just do straight up uh, a commercial with that kind of style of footage in it. I mean, you can upsell it. You can say, look, this is my video production. If you want some 360 footage, add this. If you want some drone shots, add this. And then now you're just upselling the hell out of that one client to get this awesome footage because you decided to invest in learning some video. <sighs> Boy, I'm sorry, folks. I'm, getting, I'm just passionate. Uh, there is still a place for, oh, uh, but general demand for photographers will reduce over time. That's right. So I'm trying to tell you, if you're not getting hip to looking at this, uh, looking, at, just look at your camera, right? If you have a camera that you bought within the past three years, honestly, look at all the features and figure out and say, okay, how do I leverage this technology? These cameras are damn near a computer that takes, that captures content. That's why right now I'm, I, I, I've been saying, do not look at yourself as a photographer, more of a director of photography. Think of the big picture. And nowadays I would say, no longer to be a photographer, but you're a content marketing specialist of sorts. You create content. You're a content creator, but not in the sense of a YouTuber or a TikToker, but in the sense that, oh, you want photo content? Oh, I got you. Oh, you need video content? I got you. Oh, you need 360? Oh, I got you. Oh, you need drone? I got you. 
And if you're able to answer people's problems, guess what that means? You become more valuable in the marketplace. The people who are winning are people who add value to other people. If you're not and you're just wanted just do take photos, that means this is a hobby. And that means you will, you know, and you don't have to worry about the money. But if you're just keeping your head in the sand because it's hard to learn this new technology that's literally sitting in your lap, you will lose. All right. Let's get to the new uh, – before we get into the next one, and my battery's always getting lower and lower. I appreciate anybody listening to my rants and all, you know, you know. But I'm just passionate. I want you, I want you folks to be ready. And also, I'm hoping – you know, feel free to chime in with your opinion. What do you think so far? What do you think the demand of photograph of professional photographers are looking like in the future? I already saw it coming. I'm telling. I already. Oh my god! I already saw it coming. I saw it the last year when I did when uh for this year when I looked over my year to year, right for uh, uh all throughout uh 2022, um, I my at least 25 percent of my income was straight from video okay straight from video so i already see a huge trend when it's starting to take over a large section of my income anybody on it on um instagram feel free to come ahead and follow me on um youtube duh and click the link on my bio and come come join the conversation okay all right we got a uh comment who would have thought Pie comes in. Okay, I better start studying and getting into video. Yeah, damn right, brother. Okay, because otherwise I'm not gonna be like, yo, what are you doing? That's right. I want you to do that. I want you to win. Okay. Matter of fact, that was the wrong sound effect, but you understand what I'm saying. Okay, Pie. Yeah, you want to. You don't have to become a Spielberg, but you should become proficient enough. And over time, you just get better. Just like with retouching and editing. Over time, you will get better. That's what I did. And honestly, um, you know, um, that's how I learned Adobe Premiere. If you actually look at your um, tools inside of Lightroom and Photoshop, they're very, you'll see those same tools inside of Premiere, InDesign, anything Adobe. So they carry over a lot and, and, and After Effects too. Obviously, there's new tools that you have to equate, uh, acclimate yourself to in those other programs, but it's not as foreign as you think because they're all within the Adobe uh, Creative Cloud Suite sphere, right? Um, so just open up the program. I pay for the full suite. I don't know if you do, but the point is just open up Premiere and give it a go. And you could, you you can't mess up. You can't mess up because you're not really editing the original content. So therefore, you're not messing up your original footage. So go crazy. Learn it. It will take you very far. And eventually, when you're able to hire an editor, right, you could at least, you now you know the language. You know how to talk to them. Oh, I need this to do this. I need that, 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 that. And now you know the language. And that just makes you more an effective director because that's what I said you ultimately want to get yourself to. And then you could communicate to your team more effectively. OK, and that's what leaders know how to do. They know how to listen. They know how to communicate. All right. Anyway, Pi comes in, uh, says, been looking at some Sony cameras for video. Hey, man, you know what? You can't go wrong with Sony. <clears throat> you know, obviously, I'm a Lumix head. So all my video, my film, my short films, my client commercial film uh, uh, videos, freaking YouTube live stream. Everything I do is Panasonic, Panasonic, Panasonic. It's stupid easy to use. It's reliable. I love the color. Boom. That's where I'm at. So, but if Sony answers that for you, then go ahead and do that. Because that's all that matters. Is that it helps you out. Okay. So yeah, go look at Sony. But you definitely want to get into video, man. Like that. I, I'm telling you, I'm I'm get, I'm sharing this article again for an obvious reason. All right. I'm always thinking about ways to level up. With the cost of living skyrocketing, right? Interest rates going up, everything, just life itself costs more. Ever, it, it, It's costing more to live year to year faster than ever. You gotta be on your A game. You gotta diversify. And I'm not talking about your stock portfolio either. Um, Pi comes in. What do you think 
about the Lumix S5 II. Well, that's I meant to do this earlier, but okay, that's what I have right here. Okay, uh, Pi, right here. I got the Lumix S5 II. All right, right there. I'm not sure if you can see it. There you go, S5 Mark II. And I'm record. I'm live streaming with the S5, the Mark One. It's on manual focus, so that's why it's not doing anything. But this one has the phase detect. I tested it out today. I just oh, I just got it in yesterday, so I haven't really done a whole lot. I will be doing an unbo uh, not an unboxing and a uh, a review. Now uh, during my live photo shoot on February 26th for my patrons at the ten dollar level, I will be doing a live photo shoot. And I'll be using this camera in studio. So you'll be able to uh, ask me all the questions as I take photography, uh, take the photos with this camera live. I'll be using a 50 mil F1.4, 7200, 2.8, and uh, Sigma and Lumix lenses with this. I love it. Um, right now, full HDMI. Okay. Uh, right here. USB-C charged. Okay. Okay. Um, the only slight drawback, which I liked in the GH6, is that it, it did have an XQ uh, a CF Express Type B, but uh, card. But this has two uh, SD card slots right there. Um, you know, it does uh, up to 180 frames a second, which I really liked in HD. That was that was crazy slow. Um, what else do I like about it? it does 4K 60, uh, and now it has the phase detect, which for my first initial test, when I walked around uh, one of the stores and I was doing this, it stuck on my face the whole time, even as I was moving and I was walking like I was uh, Frankenstein. I was actually pretty impressed. So I want more testing. And I did the test with this lens, which is the 20 to 60 millimeter. And I've actually shot the, the S5 with the 20 to 60 millimeter when I went to Barcelona. And boy, this lens actually had so much versatility. And um, you'd be surprised how much you get to include uh, in 20 millimeters versus just up to 20, uh, 24 millimeters. I really enjoyed this little package uh, when I went to Barcelona. And this is pretty much all I shot there. And, and I love the photo results. So I'm excited about this camera. But I'm going to get I'm personally going to buy the uh, Lumix S5 Mark II X, the all blackout one, because that has HD, uh, has raw uh, video footage out, out, output has more video um, features that I really want to have, but still a 24 megapixel uh, sensor. So anyway, and that's that. Okay. So that's, that's it right there, Pi. So, um, but stay tuned. I'll drop some more experiences through on a Patreon. So you know how to check that out, brother. Okay. Um, he says the S5 II is sweet. I will take the S5 off your... Ah, <laughs> sorry, can't do that, brother. <laughs> okay, uh, Panasonic said that to me because, uh, again, uh, I do work for them. And they, um, uh, when I, we have some events and stuff coming up. And when I visit stores, I have to show these to the folks there. So, uh, sorry, brother. Okay, I will be enjoying it. So you can live vicariously through me. Okay? <laughs> All right, let's get back into it, folks. Um, whoops. Let me turn off that comment. Um, here we go. This was the big one. AI will change everything, right? Okay. We already saw one of the uh, latest crazes where people uploaded photos and it turned into some futuristic, cool characteristic, but 90, 90 to 95% of the photos were trash. But like one good one would be awesome and they would post it and, and turn their profile pic to it. Got it. But the, the, the most important thing is not um, that um, that it failed most of the time. The most important thing is that it was able to do pretty much what you wanted to do. And all these updates are going to just be software updates, coding updates. So the future is here. If you, um, I use a thing called Grammarly, and there's another thing, a program called Writer, where if you just type in a few such and such and you say, okay, I want three paragraphs, it's going to be about portrait photography and lenses, and da, 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 da. it will come up with a generic three paragraphs, man. It's crazy. Look it up. It's called Writer, R-Y-T-R, and that's specifically AI that will help you create captions, 
for your post straight up. If you give it a few topics, um, Grammarly helps you to, well, fix your grammar. Because me, I type too fast. I make misspellings and all the stuff. So I have Grammarly installed onto my iPhone and on my computers so that I can uh, it corrects me. Not only does it just correct my spelling, but it does grammar punctuate. It does punctuations and everything. It's really dope. And that's the free version. It's super smart. And obviously, as you continue to type, it starts learning how you type and communicate. It's crazy, man. So I can imagine what the paid version does. Mind blowing. And that can be really great. If you're creating content, it can help you make captions. It can help you come up with, okay, how am I going to, or a title. It'll give you title suggestions. If you give it a few things and you, it'll give you several titles for you to make me make for your next video. I mean, man, I'm going to use it. So that's the good part. The photography part, like we just experimented with right before Christmas, I didn't do it, okay? Because first of all, that company had weird ties with Russia, okay? And secondly, I'm uploading all my facial recognition. My, it's You're just training at facial recognition like we did when we said, here's me and here's me when I'm fucking 70. We're training the, the algorithm facial recognition. That's why our phones, like you, if you have the iPhone 14, it can instantly open up your phone like that. It just scans your face that quick. So I didn't want, you know, I don't know. I just, I just, like, we're given so much so quick. I just want to understand who's behind it. And then when I come to find out that company was, has some weird ties with Russia and all this other stuff, and we're sitting here arguing with them, I'm like, well, hold on. That's a little, that's a little dicey for me. So I didn't get into that whole, thing because there's a bigger agenda they make it look fun and entertaining but there's a bigger agenda My, what i'm saying bigger agenda is they this technology is going to be smart as hell if we don't think you know uh, i go back to terminator 2 a uh, skynet like there's gonna be something so massive happening and that is just where it's coming now that's the paranoid bad part the good part is Again, just like I just said, AI is going to help us be able to create more effective uh, content faster, right? Um, hold on. We have a quick comment here. We have a quick comment. Samuel comes in. Yes. Yes, sir. I've been using that stuff. Okay. Um, absolutely. I think, Samuel, you might. No, your, fader, your, 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 your por, uh, profile pic looks pretty good. But if you're saying, uh, Samuel, uh, let me know if you mean that uh, AI technology. But we've all been using AI for some time. That's how we open up our phones. Um, uh, uh, let's see, artificial intelligence. Uh, we got the fingerprint. Um, what else is there? All these little apps and whatnot. The, uh, when we go on TikTok and it does our face thing, the ads, ears and stuff. I mean, we're all doing it. And we're all training the algorithm how to do it even better. Like, that's why our phones are getting smarter and smarter and smarter and smarter. And um, and, and it's quite incredible, quite honestly. So there's good and bad to that, folks. Let's get into the article, though, okay? Um, right here. Here we go. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. Artificial, artificial intelligence is something we're familiar with from science fiction films. They're either set in the future or someone or something has traveled back in time. Nah, now it's now it's now time. AI is already in a feature in many modern cameras and lenses. Absolutely, it's called autofocus. Hello, face detect, our face detect, animal eye detect, all these detects, car detect, the detect shit. I mean, it's crazy. It's already in our, it's making our experience that much uh, easier, uh, better more enjoyable and our quality of work up uh, of course even though here's the con as it's more easier for us to create high quality work the perceived value uh, goes down you see what i'm saying and that goes back to the earlier point where the demand for professional photographers uh, go down because the perceived value has lowered it's like damn well if you could just point the camera and don't just take the photo of the hawk well the hell i need you for i'll just figure it out um, I've actually seen many designers, emerging designers, buy a camera and figure it out themselves now versus hiring a photographer to shoot their collection. 100%. And I'm not even shocked. Okay. Your camera is plotting to kill you and take over the world. 
<laughs> I don't think your camera, but the, the technology inside is smart as hell, though. Uh, the autofocus, as I said, the image stabilization. Look, the Lumix S, uh, S5 Mark II is six and a half stops. Golly. I remember when four and a half, five stops was great. Now it's at six, six and a half stops. You could hold the GH6. You could handhold for a second. OK, worth of exposure and get a sharp image. Hello. OK, that's a serious win. And that's a Micro Four Thirds sensor. So holla, holla to Panasonic for that one. Um, both use AI to achieve precise results. That's right. Look, look at um, uh, uh, image stacking, right? When you do um, pixel shifting and you take four photos and it stacks it together and it does it internally. Remember when you used to have to do that physically? You take the four photos and then you put it in Lightroom and you stack them together and you create one photo. No. Hell, Luke, uh, S5 Mark II creates a 96 uh, megapixel image. It takes four images, 24 megapixels. Boom, bada, bing. You now have a 96 uh, megapixel image in the camera ready for you to download and post. I mean, that's crazy, man. That's AI for you. And that's the good part. Um, it does tracking and automatic exposure features, right? Uh, ISO, uh, auto ISO, etc. And similar AI software is being introduced to smartphone cameras and editing apps, 100%. As I said, some effects, like in CapCut, okay, shout out to CapCut, um, there are effects that are specifically adapted to motion. And they take the image and move it in certain particular ways, part of the image where it should be looking like it's moving in weird particular ways. I mean, it's crazy, man. The iPhone 7 has a new portrait mode, which blurs the background. Okay, that's an iPhone 7. So obviously this is not as, this isn't a, uh, you know what I'm saying, recent, because we're up to the 14, brother. So the video feature now with cinematic, dude, I, I skipped the, um, iPhone 13 on purpose, because when the cinematic mode, when it became blurry background for video, um, came out the first gen, I was like, all right, this is great technology, but I want to wait another generation, a new camera, so that they further improve the algorithm and everything else, the software for cinematic mode in the video. I'm glad I did. I got the 14, and it blows my mind. It blows my mind what you could do. It's crazy, man. And that's on the freaking iPhone. So the shout out to the cinematic mode. Um, it still needs a little work, but for, for, it, for it to be in your phone, man, I'm telling you, you can create some cool content from it. Uh, the editing software on your computer will develop more and more. Absolutely. That's why I, um, look at inside a Lightroom. Okay. Next time you're in Lightroom, go to the blemish removal tool and click content and where. That is completely all AI, right? Uh, when you do um, 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 uh, stamp removal, that's AI too. It does a computation. What are the pixels? How do I erase the certain set of pixels that doesn't look like it belongs to, with the rest of the pixels? And it, and it covers it. That's all AI. And it's getting better. Shout out to Lightroom with Content Aware. That's a new thing. If you do it inside of Photoshop, it does a great job. <sighs> You won't need to spend ages looking through all your latest shots. The AI editing will select the best ones for you. It will learn from your behavior and adapts to your practices and speed up your procedures. Now, that would be scary, man. When it starts doing that real quick, that's crazy, man. But you know what? I can kind of see it happening, though. AI is already making digital photography quicker and easier. And it's only going to develop further and further. Absolutely. AI is the future. It's in everything we do. Um, it learns us. Right? It's learning us. That's what I'm talking about, that Skynet. Shout out to Terminator, okay? Okay? It is not that far off, all right? And shout out to the Matrix, all right? There's going to be some old old guy up in the tower that uh, we're going to need a Neo to go, hey, man, what the hell are you doing up here? Um, AI, okay. We, we already talked about that. Okay, so that's cool right there. Let's go check, a, let's check out on some of our comments here. I know some people got something to say. Uh, who is this? Quick Strike, Quick Strike 209 co comes in and says, yeah, I really believe cell phones are going to replace cameras one day soon. You know, um, 
I'm going to say yes and a no. Yes for first choice, beginning photographers, um, uh, most accessible, 100%. It's going to be, like I said, when I went on a photo hike, I mean, a, a, a hike a few months ago, and I brought my camera, right? It was actually much easier for me to just grab my back pocket and I took all the, the all the photos I wanted on my cell phone. And guess where? what's on my cell phone? My social apps. I just edit it real quick and upload it right. And there you go. You can't beat the accessibility and the efficiency of your phone. And yes, the quality is getting so good. It's just, it's really hard to beat. But the sensor size is a huge issue. Low light performance is a huge issue. Those particular things. Yeah, they have al the algorithms are better trying to improve that, but you can't get around sensor size. Let's just be honest. The technology and the uh, or the uh, ad ad technological advantages of a larger sensor you cannot beat. And that's why cell, and, uh, cell phones have a limitation. It's the size. Right. That's why our cameras are bigger. It needs this, you know, um, you got heat uh, dissipation and all this other jazz. Right. To process all this information. And, and that's why our cell phones, they're capped at a particular level because no one's going to buy larger than what the iPhone 14 Max Pro is really. Hell, my next phone is not going to be the iPhone 14 Max Pro unless it's that advantageous. I'm going to get a smaller one. I want it to easily fit right in my pocket. So that's why I say yes and no. I think having a actual interchangeable lens camera has huge advantages. The lens technology in itself is going to make it worth it. You're going to get a higher grade of glass and technology in the lens of your camera versus a cell phone. So yes and no is what I mean. But are people going to use their cell phone for more day-to-day -day stuff more than ever? 150%. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I think mirrorless cameras and digital cameras have its for sure safe place. Now, the, uh, it, the market is shrinking, though, unfortunately. Um, so but thank you for that for that for that comment. OK, we got we got Kaylin F in the house. What? OK, comes in with a comment or a question, rather. Says. How do you think this affects photo photographers that are just starting out? Do we even have a chance? Well, you know, I, I know like this whole entire time I came over as doom and gloom, but really it's just I'm educating you, okay? I'm not, my intention is not to be doom and gloom. My intention is to really truly help you understand not only the current marketplace, like where we're at, the state of things, but for you to see how can you leverage what's going on so that it could take you even further down the road. Like if someone, if someone, like if someone says, what should I buy? A DSLR or a mirrorless? I would say, well, the ROI, the return on your investment is in mirrorless. Why? Research and development, firmware updates. Uh, technology, uh, the technology inside of them, pound for pound, are just newer and and, and 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 improved. So I would say go to mirrorless. I'm not going to say not to go to DSLR. Like that's a cool choice. It might be more affordable too. So I'm just helping you to see the big picture of things. Now, to your question, uh, do you have a chance? Hundred percent. If you take heed of these things that I'm sharing with you. You get into photography. If you're looking to make this into a passion that you could turn into profit, how do I create value to my target audience? Who are my clients? You have to know who your clients are, right? And then how do I add value to them that is my X factor, that makes me special, that helps me stand out? If you're thinking like that, you will win, guaranteed. Guaranteed. These are tools. All these are tools. Your cell phone, your um, your, your your camera, whatever. These are tools. But without that kind of mindset, you will lose. Okay? That's all I'm trying to, I'm just helping, I'm just trying to help you see the big picture. And then like, all right, cool. This is the reality. How do, Now I know how to play the game. But if you're sitting there uh, thinking the whole board is black and red, when written in checkers rather than chess, you're going to lose. 
I'm just trying to tell you the game is being played in chess mode right now. Very, and that's all, okay? But you have people like myself, hopefully other uh, uh, vloggers out there on YouTube that actually give a damn and give you uh, some great encouragement and some real facts. This is the reality. I'm dealing with it. I'm a working photographer well, like all of you. I'm in the trenches, sweating bullets. When it comes to new stuff, you know, I mean, it took me a while to get with this damn TikTok thing. You know, I don't, I don't have any dances. You know, I'm trying to figure it all out. Like, how do I use TikTok? How do I use these new technology to leverage to be able to uh, still be relevant and get my get my brand out there? So yes, um, overall, I think this is going to be good for photographers for those who are thinking ahead. As I said, when you see that 360, okay, how do I? How do I package that up? I gave you an idea already. The, um, if you do video production for every new technology that you learn that can add more special effects to the video overall quality, right? If you say, okay, I'm going to do a video production, two camera recording, very static, or maybe some gimbal work. Cool. That's my basic package. Oh, you want some 360 video? Oh, this is what it could look like. You show them a demo and they say, oh, but that, that I'm going to, it's going to require you know, an extra $250, $400 for that. Oh, you want some drone video? Okay, well, cool, because everybody loves drone footage. Let me go ahead and add this extra amount. Boom, bada, bing. That's all I'm trying to help you to do so that you can be ready and prepared because I'm telling you, clients now expect you to do it all. They do. They really do. Man, it's crazy. I have a client right now. We did two commercial shoots. We're doing a, a, a lifestyle fashion shoot on... Um, after my live shoot on the 26th, we're doing a two-hour li lifestyle fashion shoot. And then we're going to do a video shoot. I mean, it's all one client. It's cr I'm telling you, they, it, they expect it. And trust me, you'll come off like a boss if you could cover all the bases. That's all I'm trying to help you. So, yes, there is there is a, uh, quote, unquote, a, um, a, a chance. Okay? But you got to change from that old model mindset. I just do portraits. Well, you better be goddamn good at it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the people who are really good at it that are winning right now have been doing it for 15, 20, 30 years. Joe Grimes, I think is his name, or Peter Hurley, or or a uh, Lindsay Adler, Sue Bryce, and all these. But they've been doing it for decades. They're, they're pros. They've locked down their niche and their talent and skills already up there. They got in early, if you will. For those now, you got to think of what that is for you in 20 years. That's what I'm talking about, 360 uh, video footage. That's what I'm talking about, AI. That's what I'm talking about, all these uh, technological changes that they didn't have to worry about back then. Biggest thing was going from, you know, uh, from film to, 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 to digital. I mean, our technology change is happening is by the minute. So if anything, I think you're more prepared. I think you have more of a shot than most people. All right, uh, Kaylin, so I hope, you know, and if not, you go ahead, um, keep in touch, uh, follow me on Instagram, and DM me if you have any questions. You're not alone. You are not alone. And, of course, you go ahead, and you know what I'm going to say, folks. You already know what I'm going to say, okay? You go ahead, enjoy my Patreon, okay, and get daily photography educational content at uh, patreon.com slash Robert Silver Photography. So I hope that helped you out. Um, we got some more comments. Thank you, everybody, for your comments. We got Pi coming in again. And he says, I don't think the experience side, uh, the experience side of cameras won't go away. Example, wedding will still want, uh, still want the experience of having a photographer, 100%. That's why I mentioned earlier, Pi. I think I'm not sure if you were here then, but what I said was, if you like, um, um, no, the photographer won't. But what kind of additional uh, value you can add to that? Like when um, who was it? Cooley said, "Oh, I do green. I do green screen backdrop at my weddings." I said, "Great, that's great." What you could do then is add that as an upsell service. You have your regular standard package for your wedding photography, and then you upsell, adding more value to the experience um, by having a green screen, which they could choose out of 10 templates for the background to be whatever, excuse me, and then 
and then upsell that. So now you, hey, you know what? For extra 300 bucks, I'll set up a green screen. You can have a, your own cool thing with your name on the back and everybody just shoots in front of it. And uh, But on a computer, they can see it, print out the photo or some crap like that. I think that's a genius way to upsell and add more value. So no, I don't think the wedding photographer will go away completely. You're absolutely right, okay? But um, I do notice those who concentrate heavily on wedding photography are the biggest winners. There are specialists. Specialists get paid more. If you want to do weddings, okay, and you really want to win at weddings and get 30 um, to 50 bookings in a year, that's like up to, you know, every 10 days or I'm not sure how the whole thing turns out, but uh, 50 would be about once a week, right? You want to get like once a week, you got to, that's, that's what you do. You're an amazing wedding photographer, but I can guarantee you they charge more than the average because they're a specialist and they're great at it, okay? So that's one way for you to win, Pi, and everybody else. Become a specialist at that specific field, okay? But recognize certain genres are more saturated with photographers because the entry, the bar to becoming a professional photographer in said genre is very low in a lot of them. Headshot, portrait, wedding, um, but if you do infant photography, that's a little better. If you specialize in a particular boudoir, not just boudoir for its sake, but particular type, that can be something. As I said, 360 video. These are all ways for you to uh, become a specialist and thus get paid more because specialists get paid more. Do not be a generalist. Uh, anyway, let me turn this th thing on here. Boop -dee -boop -dee -boop. All right. Um, quick strike. 209 says, okay, okay, it makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. I hope it does. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, my cell phone stays with me. I love the quality. The iPhone, I don't, I hate the I, oh, yeah, I am an Apple fanboy. Okay, folks, it, it is what it is. Okay, but um, the 14 is truly it freaking knocked my socks. I was like, damn, this thing is fun, you know. Um, so I got only imagine what the future brings us. I would say. Um, it's it, it won't replace, but for sure, it will be part of our part of our everyday life. That's for sure. It's not going anywhere. Um, Cooley says, just need to always make a make a new market. That's right. That's what I'm saying. Think about how you can leverage that green screen and add it to your services, but do not make it part of your package. I would not do that. I would have them pay for that as an additional service because that's additional effort, sweat, blood, and everything else you got to put into making that happen. So if you have a wedding package, right, I would say nothing more than three wedding packages, by the way, uh, and then a small, medium, large, and then have additional services that you can upsell. But I'll be talking about upselling. When, folks? I will be talking about upselling on my next live show this Monday, okay, about photography upselling. It's an art, and it'll lead to a lot of coinage, okay? Uh, so, Cooley, hopefully you tune in for that one. Uh, Cooley also says, uh, real estate already does 3D. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. They do 3D, 360, all that stuff. Absolutely. You put the camera in, in the middle of the room, and I don't know what it does, but, uh, but the point is, or you do walkthroughs at first, like, you would have someone with a gimbal walking through everywhere. Now you do 360. And that's why you can do virtual visits very easily, especially during during the pandemic. That's when it went on and cracking. Uh, when the lockdown happened, that's how they did it. They were doing virtual uh, open houses. And they would just have somebody walk around with the with the thing. And then they would set up all virtual open houses. And that's how they were able to show showcase uh, the house. So that's what I'm saying. Like, these technologies can be a son of a gun or can be a godsend. It's really how you look at it and, it, and you figure out ways to creatively exploit these new technologies, right? So that's, that's all I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to prepare most folks because, quite honestly, this is make or break season. It's make or break. Right now, on average, if you're a single person like myself, you need a job and a hustle, right? I'm, my job is my photography. And I have my studio and I rent it out when I can, you know, through peer space. And then you got to have your side hustle. For me, that's education. That's me educating all of you, talking to you, keeping you informed, going live two, twice a week, all that stuff. That's my side hustle, 
What I'm saying is you can't you you, you can't leave. You don't have the luxury unless you're financially well off with a Mazel Tov. You're winning. But um, if you it, it, but for, for, for us common regular folk, you got to have more than one thing going. I mean, that's just the reality of things. OK. And, and that's what I'm trying to help you out so that you, you whatever it is you got going on it, it is leading you in the right direction. That's all I'm trying to do for you. OK, because um, I'm rooting for us photographers I'm rooting for us artists here that have a passion in what we do. And that's why we need to have these real conversations and, um, and and figure out how we can leverage this, how we can how we can pimp this opportunity. All right. All right. Let's get back to it. Um, beep, beep, beep. Here we go. Look at that. Well, I'll be damned. All right. My battery's getting low, folks. So we got to talk real fast. OK, that means I need to shut up and get right to it. Smartphones will kill off the compact camera. We already saw that. We are we are seeing that right now. Uh, if you're getting a compact camera, it's almost you know, it's almost wide, right? Maybe for the Zoom, uh, we have at Lumix we have the ZS70, right? But they just let go of a few compact cameras earlier this year. They they announced uh, not making the LX100 Mark II, I believe it was, and some other uh, um, fixed lens cameras, compact cameras. OK, and I'm sure other camera companies are not really heavily investing in that. Matter of fact, they're doubling down on full full frame. So because uh, of smartphones, smartphones, when that came out, you know, go go ahead and look at the data. Uh, 2010 to now, it's it's a demise. OK, the smartphone is just way too accessible, compact, efficient. It, everybody's happy with it. The mobile apps are all on the same phone you take pictures with. So, I mean, it just makes sense. Am I, I can't be wrong about that. We all know what the time it is. Um, now, we let, let's go ahead and read the article. Okay. The future of photography isn't bright for everyone. That's, this is a trend already well on its way, right? So, um, since 2010, digital cameras have fallen 80%. This is at the time of this article. I think it's 2018. And it's not because people are taking fewer photos. On the contrary, people are taking more photos. But it's just on their cell phone. Just like I said, when I went hiking, I brought my good camera. I brought a specific lens I was excited to use. Okay? I, I mean, I took that thing out like once. And then I was like, oh, it takes too much time to take out and everything. I just grab my back pocket, pull out the cell phone, click, 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 click. And hell, with your iPhone, with the iPhone 14, okay, it's the phone I have, so that's why I'm always talking about iPhone. Um, you can shoot in RAW. Hell, I could get a uh, what? What is that RAW file? It's a uh, 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 it's a, a 48 megapixel image in my phone RAW. Dale, that's what I'm talking about. That's a solid win. Okay, matter of fact, that's a Randy Savage. Uh. Why carry around an extra piece of gear when you already have a camera in your pocket? Yes. And for security purposes, it makes sense. It's much less intrusive when you're just walking around. Uh, people won't look at your eyeball uh, like you're odd with all these big ass camera. And you don't look like a, 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 a target, right, for thieves. So the cell phone is very practical um, in many cases. The first iPhone car uh, cameras were not mount no match, but now they are amazing. They are, except tablets. Tablets suck. Um, with that said, uh, but, 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 uh, social media is also becoming a hub for, for young photographers and old. That's why I'm saying your your social media where you're going to post this content is in your phone. The camera is in the phone. It's all in one spot. I mean, uh, we should not be surprised why smartphones killed off compact cameras. Now, will they kill off the big DSLRs and everything else? I don't see that coming anytime soon because the quality pound for pound is no match. No match. The lens quality technology, right? The glass is amazing. And then also um, uh, the features and everything else that it can do, the processing power, um, as well as the size of the sensor and other countless technological stuff I don't know about, still makes our full frame uh, APS-C cameras are um, just still extremely relevant for creators, okay? Compact cameras are even losing their appeal with casual snappers. Absolutely. Why? It's your phone. You take it, you take it out. Boop. There you go. And again, the autofocus is great. Boop. It's a no-brainer. That's why. 
Okay, they set the trend in terms of user experience. They really have. High standard DSLRs and mirrorless cameras are not in danger. Their future is assured. But I fear the sun is setting on the day to compact cameras. Oh, 100%. No, but not on, not on DSLRs. No way. Again, there's so much advantages to this. Okay. And guess what? It, your commercial client is not going to be happy when you show up with your iPhone 14 Max Pro. Okay. No matter how awesome your case is. They wouldn't want to see a good camera. Okay, that's a fact. Uh, but I fear um, the digital compact had, it, yes, it had its day, but that day is done, folks. It's a wrap, son. So let's get with the program. Um, do we have any comments? No, 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 no. Okay, so that's that part. Now let's get to the next one before my, my laptop battery is getting a little ugly around here. Okay, folks? So on the next note, we're going to be talking about the last but not least, the death of the DL, uh, uh, DSLR. That's right. This is a sad state of affairs for DSLRs. All right. Not completely, but definitely is looking a little ugly around here. Let's talk about it. All right. DSLRs. Don't get me wrong, DSLRs are great cameras. Absolutely, they still are fantastic. But don't be a victim, okay? The market forces are at hand. As I said, the R&D is going to mirrorless cameras. So if you're a first-time camera buyer, interchangeable lens camera, interchangeable meaning you could change the lens. Do not, I repeat, if possible, do not get anything but a mirrorless camera. That's my opinion. The R and D is there. Firmware, everything, all the all the effort and energy that these big companies are putting in is into mirrorless. Nikon and Canon are still making excellent DSLRs that are popular for photographers. Yes, because the, because they're well, they're cheaper. Okay, that and they're great cameras. They create great work. Nothing wrong with them. But I'm just saying, in the long run, but the tide. Is turning for mirrorless cameras. Go ask Sony, right? That's why they're dominated. Dominating with what? Mirrorless cameras. That's how they took over. Everybody had to follow. And that's why everybody's playing catch up to Sony in terms of uh, R&D, uh, autofocus, lens choice, etc. Uh, they're still turning, uh, uh, starting to starting to break all the records for resolution and image quality. Absolutely. How do you think all of our cameras now do like 20 to 30 frames a second? That was like unheard of in DSLRs. Uh, the uh, single lens reflex, the uh, uh, it would be flapping so damn much. The mirror in our in our, in our our DSLR, it couldn't keep up to 30 frames. The thing would fly away. Um, Fuji has sensed the change in the wind and no longer produce DSLRs. So they, you, we already know that. Uh, but the, the but the importance is that you see how Sony Sony dominated so quickly because they just they saw the future and they just went heavy in the paint with it and then now they sent the trend in terms of user uh, uh, um, um, SLR a mirrorless uh, excuse me mirrorless interchangeable lens camera experience. So and now of course Nikon and Canon are are playing catch up. Canon caught is pretty much caught up quite honestly in terms of their because they had auto face detect, so they weren't really too far off. Nikon for sure needed a serious catch up, and then um, the Z9 is finally their catch up. And then and then now hell you can see now with Panasonic they always were dedicated to contrast uh, phase detect uh, and then I mean, contrast detect uh, auto focus, and now they have phase detect in their latest camera, which is the uh, S5 Mark II and S5 Mark II X. So, hello, R&D is in mirrorless. Do yourself a favor. It's a better investment in the long run. All right? Now, as my battery's getting low on my little old MacBook Air, which has been a champ. I'm actually very impressed. Okay. Let me just check for any comments. Okay, we're still good. Let's let's talk about this part right here. There we go. All right. Conclusion. Let's let's bring it down. Let's let's calm down a little bit. All right. 
this is not a panic mode. You should not be panicking. You actually should be rejoicing because there's all this technology. Honestly, as I went through each of these, provided opportunities. Remember what did I talk about in my previous episode? A SWOT analysis, right? Strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Okay. We talked about all the above here, but there are a lot of strengths and opportunities with these technological advancements that we can leverage and make us more uh, better photographers for sure, right? Autofocus, stabilization, etc. But also uh, better at equip uh, adding value to our potential clients, right? Uh, these, these, because a lot of these technological uh, uh, advancements can be easily additional services you could provide and thus adding more value and more money into your pocket, right? Um, looks like we do have a comment. Let me go ahead and uh, check these two out right here. Pi comes in and says, death of DSLR. Tesla, Tesla makes one of the best future cars, but some people still love they're 65 Mustangs. You're goddamn right. They both get you to your destination 100%. But fuel efficiency is different. But consumption, yeah, yeah, they're both just different experiences 100%. I'm not saying uh, death in the long run, though, uh, the R&D is going where? That's my point. So if you're going to buy a system right now, if it's not because of economic and the, the a used DSLR is cheaper, which it is. Um, if it's not because of that, overall, pound for pound, your better uh, investment is in mirrorless. That's a fact. That is just the way it is. But yes, 100%. I love the D500 of the Nikon. Excellent APS-C camera. Still is. Amazing photo autofocus. It's a phenomenal camera. But it's still kind of long on its tooth. You know what I mean? And Pi also says... Uh, Ansel Adams is considered one of the best photographers. He didn't have a mirrorless full frame. Yes, but he would use one though if he had one now. Just like is it, it, it just because we can't assume that uh just because we have the technology now that he wouldn't use it if he had access to it, right? Can't really quite say. Uh, matter of fact, I think he would be a freaking pro at Photoshop. Hmm? Right, if he had access to that technology and he knew how to use it, who says he wouldn't? He wouldn't try it out, right? Come on now. So, I'm I'm looking for you to be the next Ansel Adams, brother. Now you got the technology. What's up? What's up, man? Um, Pi also says, I get it though, Rob. I also have a mirrorless camera, and I do see the advantages. Absolutely, there are pros and cons to all of this. That's what I'm saying. It's not doom and gloom. I'm not telling you to go burn your film. And, and and throw away your DSLRs. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just giving certain perspectives and just helping you understand where the future is going, so that we could better leverage these particular opportunities that are coming up, and that we could turn those threats into opportunities. Right? Those losses into wins. Losses is sticking your head in the sand. Wins are seeing what's coming around the bend and preparing yourself. That's all I'm trying to say. That's it. Uh, Cooley comes in and he says, uh, he had a eight by 10 view camera. Well, there you go. I'm just saying it's like, I I'm just, I I you know, when we look at greats, um, who says they wouldn't use any of the modern technology just because it makes it that much easier. I don't, I don't, I quite honestly think they would exploit any of the technology that's coming out now. Why not? I mean, it's only human curiosity to see what the new and greatest thing is. Right, it's not really disrespecting the art. He's still great, right? He's still great. Uh, you know, uh, I, I couldn't take anything from him, whether he used a mirrorless or medium format or whatever. Um, all right, now because my laptop battery is looking really, it's looking about as ugly as a, as a, uh, as anything. I'm trying to think of something ugly. Uh, I forgot what the name of that bat. It's a real ugly bat. I forgot the uh, ugly old bat. But anyway, that's as bad as my battery is looking. Um, let me get to all this. Again, I'm just looking at my laptop, folks. I really apologize. Me looking over here. It's so disrespectful to just be looking like that. Uh, but I'm uh, this technology is a pain in my butt. So real quick, as we are winding down, it's about two hours. I swear, every time I do this, I really try to make it 
one hour. It never does. It never is. Okay. And that's because I love the engagement between us both. This is how, this is what it, this is what uh, let's talk photography is all about. Okay. And make sure. Oh, we got a quick comment. Uh, I get it. Though. Oh, okay. I think I got that. Oh, oh, here we go. Oh, here I'm in my sixties, new to photography, had a chance to make smartphone, uh, smart, smartphone or camera. I chose camera. Smartphones cannot match the experience, uh, the user experience. hundred percent. It is much, it is much cooler. Let's, 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 let's admit that. Right, folks. Shout out to all our camera user, or yeah, we love our cameras, folks. So anyway, as we wind down, I want to remind you, if you have any questions, head to my website, robertsillphotography.com, click education. Best thing to do is uh, go ahead and follow me on Facebook at Robert Sill Photography, on Instagram at Robert Sill Photography, TikTok, and I am on Twitter. Now, the best place to support my efforts, okay, is to... Follow me and subscribe to my Patreon at patreon.com and um, slash Robert Sue Photography. I will be hosting an exclusive Patreon live photo shoot February 26th at 10 a.m. Only for my Patreon members at the $10 level. So make sure you head to patreon.com. There's a link in my description section and you can become a member. All right. And we'll be shooting live with Venusa. She's an amazing, beautiful Brazilian model. It's going to be fun to be going down. If you can't make it, that's cool. That's all right. Make sure you tune in on Monday for another episode of Marketing Monday, where I talk about content marketing tips, tricks to turn your passion into profit. And we will be talking about photography upselling, folks. All right, because we want I want to help you make that bag, all right? Now, um... There we go. Anyway, with all that said, um, I am going to have to tune out. My voice is getting crackly, and I'm getting tired. So that is the way it goes. Anyway, make sure you smash that like, that share, and subscribe to my channel. Smash that bell icon so you get notifications for my upcoming videos. I go live twice a week to help you improve your photography. I am Robert Silver. And until next time, keep shooting, stay creative. Thank you for watching.